Jared Payton is joining the show. Jared, how Amazing. you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, guys. How you doing? Good. We need some help here because Maggie and I have been arguing about Justin Fields' comments about playing in the cold weather in Chicago. Can we play them real quick and hear your reaction to what he said? The thing is about that weather is like when when it's that cold, you have to bumble, bundle up, like put a bunch of layers on and stuff like that, and your body's cold, so you're not warmed up. So I feel like way slower in that cold weather, so it's tough. Ooh. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you, of course, want to try to stay warm on the sideline and stuff like that, but, I mean, it's hard to stay warm in that weather. I mean, Warm-ups and stuff like that, your hand's freezing up, so it's, it's tough. I hope we just get a dome. I don't, I don't yeah. care if we're at Soldier Field. I don't care if we're in Arlington Heights. I, I, I hope we get a dome on this. Okay. So, yeah. Jared, what do you think? Is that acceptable for a Bears quarterback to complain about the cold? I'm going to be honest with you, man. It, it's, if you're not from here and grew up here, it's tough. I mean, it's, it's a tough climate to be able to play in when you get into these winter months here. And, listen, I have no, I have no issue with Justin saying that. Like, I think a lot of people here in Chicago, when, you know, throughout the years, when, when Soldier Field was kind of reconstructed and, and remodeled, that they were hoping that there was an opportunity to have a dome just to, you know, to kind of even, even the playing field just a little bit. Because we always talk about bear weather here in Chicago – but that's like that's from the 80s, man. Like you know, 70s and 80s. Like guys now are from all over the place. It's it's a lot different now. So I have no issues with Justin saying that. But I also think that a dome would be suitable for for what we're trying to do long term. So with the news yesterday of Arlington Heights, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that keeps moving the way that it's moving right now. Because you guys don't know understand this. I grew up in Arlington Heights. I was born in born there uh, my dad had the hill in arlington heights which made him a legend in the game because of his workouts and went to high school in arlington heights so for me arlington heights has a special place in my heart so whatever is going to help the bears get closer to a championship if that's a dome i'm all for it jared payton is joining us of course alluding to his father the great walter payton okay so you think that it'd be okay to have a dome for chicago jared i'm saying that it's okay for Justin Fields to think this, but I, I think it's a little bit odd that he said, I feel slower in the cold because that's kind of, you know, not just saying his preference, that's talking about performance, you know, that he doesn't think he can be his best in the cold weather. How should the Bears, like, address this moving forward if he really doesn't feel like he's giving his best, uh, you know, best to his ability in the cold? Maggie, I'll be honest with you. If you just, all you had to do was turn on the tape. And yeah. watch this young man. I mean, you, you, he put, he poured out his heart into this past season for the Bears. And, and when you look at offensively and the the skill position players that were there, he, he look around the league to other teams, especially just being, you know, at the Super Bowl and looking what the Eagles did for Jalen Hurts. And um, I mean, Patrick Mahomes is a whole different story of what he had to work with this year, losing Tyree Kill. So. I think it comes down to we were in games because of Justin Fields this past season. So um, looking at his performance, I, I can't question anything about his performance. I think he went out and gave his heart just by looking at, you know, the hits that he took, uh, the issues with the offensive line going back and forth or the, the carousel that was, the, you know, of the offensive line this season. I think he did his best and, it is. It's it's a different element here in Chicago. I think he's getting <laughs> used to it. But honestly, you guys, you can't you can't take his comments. And I don't think Bears fans really are cared about. I think they they're more worried about a lot of the national media talking about the the trade that could happen with Justin Fields, like trading Justin Fields and and, and moving on for him for you know Bryce Young or something like that. And I, I put it out on Twitter yesterday. Man, I'm in these circles here in Chicago. National media can, can say what they want to say, and I, I don't have any problem saying I'm speaking for Bears fans because I feel like I can do that. I think we really, truly want to see what Justin Fields can do here in Chicago with a lot of good weapons around him, an offensive line that is stacked, and guys like A.J. Brown or, you know what I mean, like uh, some top-flight receivers and skill position players and then let's see, the, Chicago's not ready to give up on Justin Fields right now. And I don't think Ryan Poles is in that mindset either. I think this is just a bunch of, of national media trying to create a story for what they think is going to happen here in Chicago. So, Jared, you must be expecting a really big offseason then from the Bears. 
Well, I, I, I'm I'm patient, Maggie. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've always said this, even coming into this past season. I said this was a a four year plan. So to me, I thought it was going to be something that you're gonna have to buy into. I didn't think you could fix it in one off season. Can you fix it and put some pieces around, especially on that offensive line? Maybe get a you know a number one receiver to to kind of pair with uh, with Darnell Mooney and hopefully Chase Claypool can can turn into something that is special here in Chicago and figure it out after, you know, understanding the playbook and the off season. Yeah. I think you, then, then you're talking about sniffing, sniffing the playoffs here and there, but I was never saying you can fix this thing in, in one off season. I think it's going to take time and depending on what they get back, if they decide to, to trade that, that first overall pick and, and move back, I think there's an opportunity there with teams needing quarterbacks to be able to get something, and hopefully that means some multiple first-round picks, and that's how you start stacking a really good franchise is by being able to uh, to select good players. I have I have faith in Ryan Poles. It's been easy for him to tear this thing down. What we saw either before the season or throughout the season of trades that were made, uh, it's going to be tougher to, to build up. But I think Bears fans have to have faith and when see what Ryan Poles can do. And, and, you know, look at what he was a part of in Cincinnati and Kansas City. Being able to see what they were doing, I, I do have faith that he's going to be able to build it. I truly do. I just think it's going to take a little bit more time than probably a lot of Bears fans are hoping for. So, Jared, I, I feel like, I, you know, I know a lot of Bears fans. There hasn't been a real steady, consistent, excellent quarterback since your dad played with Jim McMahon. It's been a long time. Is there a... Is there an underlying reason that the Bears have had so much trouble figuring out the quarterback spot? No, I, you know, I don't. It's hard. I mean, I'm trying to figure it out still, honestly. <laughs> I mean, it's, it doesn't make sense. We're, we're, we're talking about one of the founding franchises in the NFL. And I've said this before. I really, truly believe it, that we need to get it back on track to be able to always be in contention, whether that's for championships every single year in the playoffs. There's no reason why. This organization shouldn't be there, and um, I know I know we're we're moving that direction, but for the quarterback position, no, I don't I don't understand why. And it's conversation that happens every single day here in Chicago with Bears fans. So with Justin Fields and what we saw this past season of, I know maybe everybody's not happy about the the passing yards and, and how he's throwing the ball. I think that's going to come. Um, but the one thing that you can't take from that young man is how hard he works. And he's the first guy in the building, and he's the last one to leave. And to me, that's saying something about that, about him and about playing the position. He wants to get better. He knows he can be better. And when I saw him at Super Bowl, that was the first thing. I said, man, you're him. You are him. Like, <laughs> you think you're going to get better with more, you know, offensive weapons? And the first thing he said, you guys, was, I have to be better. I have to be better. That's a part of my game I have to be better at. And I want a guy like that that I'm rooting for, for the team that I grew up loving, that the, the, the Bears colors run through my veins. I want that out of a young man who's not putting on somebody else and saying, I got it, it's got to be on me. And that's why I truly believe that this is the opportunity to really build around Justin. And once you build around Justin, hopefully better things going to come. And he's, I feel like he's only going to get better as time goes on. Jared, we can't tell you how much we appreciate this. You weigh in on the Bears, and, you know, obviously your father was a legend there, and now the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award is one of the most prestigious things you can win as an NFL player. You and your sister, Brittany, giving the award this year to Dak Prescott, who Perloff's Eagles showered with booze (laughs) for Dak Prescott. Can You were there handing him the award. What was that like for you? Were you surprised by the booze? Um, it's funny because Andrew Whitworth came up to Brittany and I and was like, yo, I'm not going to say Cowboys because I think everybody is going to boo him. Oh, but he's, he goes, they're probably going to boo him anyway. <laughs> but you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. I was like, yeah, you're right. They're probably going to boo him. I mean, this is, that's what the NFL is about. That's the rivalries are about. Like as a family, yeah, we, it, we, we were kind of taken back a little bit because we know how hard Dak works and what he's all about. Um, but then I sat there and thought about it as well. I said, if Aaron Rodgers was up there getting the award and the Bears were playing in the Super Bowl, they would probably be doing the exact same thing. So, like, I, I, I know for sure that would happen. So, I, 
even though it wasn't it was wasn't perfect, Jack handled it like a champ. He shook my hand, I shook his hand, and um, we kept it moving. But we're excited to have Jack in the Man of the Year family. He's he's a great guy. It just it hurts sometimes because there's other there's 31 other guys mm. that are deserving of the award as well that do great work. And so uh, we're just happy that we got a chance to meet a lot of those guys over the week into at Super Bowl, but also that Dak is you know, a part of this elite group of guys that are now a part of our family. Jared, booing is a sign of respect in Philadelphia. Remember that. <laughs> right. I, got, I took a lot of heat saying that the football guys did not like that, and it's the reason why, you know, the Eagles end up losing. <laughs> oh. it, it got thrown out there on Twitter, but it is what it is, man. I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with that. So it is what it is, and hopefully at some point, you know, we, we get an opportunity for the Bears to be back in the Super Bowl. That's uh, – that's the only thing I'm hoping for right now. Well, Jared, sorry. One last thing before we let you go. So you, you talked about Arlington Heights and growing up there and the history there with your father and all that. You Do you want the team to move to Arlington Heights? Um, I don't think I've ever said this before. I, I, if, the, if, the, if they could figure out a way to get things right in at Soldier Field, I'm all up for it. I'm really for whatever the team wants to do and what's going to be better for the team. But yes, I, if they move to Arlington Heights, I'm, I'm with my thumbs up saying let's go um, because it gives an opportunity for them to build something that we see some of these other organizations and franchises building where it's like a Chicago Bears land and they get a chance to build what they want to do and that's the best facilities and that's going to be better for the players and the guys and their experience and, and getting better in training. I'm all up for that because all I want is the Bears to, to be back in the Super Bowl again. And I want them to be playing regularly for for championships and in the playoffs. And if that means that moving to Arlington Heights gives them the better opportunity, I'm all for it. Jared, awesome, Jared. so Thank great you, to dude. have you. Thank you again. And it's great to get your perspective on all thing Bears and then the Walter Payton Man of the Year. Had to bring it up because <laughs> Perloff's Eagles fans, they were just, they were <laughs> merciless. It was, you're right. I think they angered the football gods. I agree well, you listen, you guys have a great show, and I appreciate you guys. Anytime you need me, just hit me up. I'm always here for you. Awesome, Jared. Really appreciate it. Great to talk to you.